Welcome to Figure PEDs. I'm Coach Steve. Now let's discuss the use of ACG on cycle and what the benefits are or the potential side effects. I think a lot of people prefer to use ACG on cycle to prevent testicular atrophy. It's the most common side effect of taking a steroid cycle, of course, because the hypothalamus pituitary testis axis downregulates, preventing testosterone production in the testicles, which reduce in size and volume. Testicular atrophy is the most common side effect that people experience when they're using exogenous androgens like testosterone, trembolone, mastrone, primobol, and whatever steroid you prefer to use. It also happens with SARMs, of course, selective androgen receptor modulators. They send the same negative feedback to the HPTA as testosterone does. So by taking SARMs, don't believe that you won't downregulate your HPTA. You'll still need testosterone on top of that to maintain normal bodily function that are dependent on testosterone. So whether you use androgens or selective androgen receptor modulators, HPTA will downregulate. So let's go over normal HPTA function first before we discuss ACG on cycle. The hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone and in response the pituitary gland releases luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Both LH and FSH signal the testicles to produce testosterone and semen. Then testosterone converts into estrogen and both testosterone and estrogen after they exit the testicles enter the bloodstream and either signal the hypothalamus or the pituitary. The concentration and the relation between both hormones prevents or promotes the release of more gonadotropin releasing hormone from a hypothalamus or more luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland responds to gonadotropin releasing hormone, serum concentrations of testosterone and serum concentrations of estrogen. And the hypothalamus only responds to serum concentrations of testosterone and estrogen. Now when both test and estrogen are high, gonadotropin releasing hormone and luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels are downregulated, and this is why your HPTA shut down. Now, in normal HPTA function, there's no ACG. ACG is predominantly produced by women when they're pregnant, but men also have very small serum concentrations of ACG, but they don't compare to luteinizing hormone. So even though ACG is present in men, it's only present in trace amounts, basically the same as nandrolone is, because it's an intermediary between testosterone and estrogen production testosterone, androlone, estrogen. So ACG is bioidentical, but in normal HPTA function, the male body responds to luteinizing hormone. Now the testicles, and the adrenal glands for that matter, they both respond to luteinizing hormone and human chorionic gonadotropin, ACG. It's a mouthful, so I'm going to refer to ACG from now on. So they both respond to LH and ACG in the combined LACG receptor. So it doesn't matter what you take, whether that's naturally pulsed LH, or exogenous ACG because it's not present in the male body or only in trace amounts. So the testicles and the adrenal glands will start producing testosterone and the neurosteroids DHEA and pregnenolone. Now the difference between naturally pulsed LH and exogenous ACG is that natural pulsed LH has a half-life of 20 to 30 minutes. But exogenous ACG, when you inject it subcutaneously, has a half-life of 24 hours and an active life of 5 days because it stays in the depot. So serum concentrations of ACG remain elevated much longer when you use it exogenously compared to a normal HPTA function where the hypothalamus just pulses out a little bit of LH, signals the testes to produce testosterone, converts into estrogen, and you get a signal and the pituitary decides with gonadotropin releasing hormone if serum concentrations of testosterone and estrogen are sufficient or need to come up a little bit. So that is a signal that is continuous Whereas with exogenous use of testosterone, your test is high, your estrogen is high, HPTA is downregulated. So when you use ACG on cycle, intratesticular testosterone levels go up, which helps to increase fertility levels a little bit, which increases testicular size. Now, testicular size will probably not return to where it was before you started taking steroids or SARMs because you're missing FSH in this equation. I mean, you're only replacing LH with ACG, but you're not replacing FSH with something else. So in that sense, if you really want to replace HPTA function, it's probably better to take human menopausal gonadotropin because HMG contains both LH and FSH, which is bioidentical in the normal HPTA function of men, and ACG, no matter what dose you're using, because it's only present in trace amounts when you're drug-free, any exogenous use is going to be elevated to superphysiological levels. So you'd be able to replace LH and FSH with HMG, 
But taking exogenous ACG is always going to increase ACG levels to superphysiological level. So there's there's a bit of a difference here. So you're taking exogenous testosterone in ACG is probably not as ideal as taking exogenous testosterone with HMG. Now there's still a bit of an issue here because both ACG and HMG need to be injected subcutaneously, resulting in a 24-hour half-life and maybe an active life of up to five days, which results in an overstimulation of the LACG receptor and perhaps the follicle-stimulating hormone receptor. So there's a bit of an issue with the overactivation of the LACG receptor. And let's compare that to the androgen receptor, which works a little bit differently. When testosterone or any other androgens or selective androgen receptor modulators attach to the androgen receptor on the cell membrane, it translocates into the nucleus. The nucleus also has androgen receptors, so there's a difference between membrane androgen receptors and nuclear androgen receptors. So in case that androgens attached to the androgen receptor on the cell membrane, it needs to translocate to the DNA. So the actual receptor takes the testosterone into the DNA. But when LH or ACG attached to the LACG receptor, it doesn't leave the cell membrane. Instead, it sends a signal in the form of a G protein. So an LACG receptor stays on the cell membrane and sends a signal, whereas the androgen receptor translocates into the DNA. So what happens is, if you overactivate the LACG receptor with ACG or HMG with frequent use, the G protein content, the signal, depletes. It downregulates. It's no longer active. And it doesn't matter how much serum concentrations you have of ACG, LH, or FSH, once G protein content of the LACG receptor is depleted, the signal doesn't work. There's no more testosterone production and semen production, and testicular volume will still go down. So this is the main issue of using ACG and ASMG exogenously, is by overstimulating the LHCG receptor, you're essentially downregulating the whole process. And now if you do want to come off cycle, and you're expecting your LACG receptors to work, increasing testosterone levels and semen production, there's a missing link. The G protein content is depleted, and the last part of the signaling link process doesn't happen. So this is the issue of using ACG on cycle, or if you chose to go with ACMG after this video. If you overdo it by only a little bit, you downregulate the whole process and deplete gene protein content of the LACG receptor, and our testicular volume will still decrease because intertesticular testosterone levels decline and semen production declines as well. And you can almost compare this to the use of triptorelin for sterility purposes. Triptorelin is a gonadotropin releasing hormone receptor antagonist. And by overdosing that to 22.25 milligrams per day, when they overdose, overdose that for sterility purposes, the pituitary gland no longer responds to the signal from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland in the form of gonadotropin releasing hormone because the receptors are completely downregulated and desynthesized and they're no longer present on the cell membrane. Now, in cases of triptoral and overdose, the gonadotropin receptor hormone receptors, they don't come back in the pituitary gland, but when you overdose, overdose on ACG or overdo ACG, the LACG receptor sensitivity can still return in the presence of follicle-stimulating hormone or estrogen. So in that sense, if you stop taking ACG on cycle four weeks before you start PCT when you intend to use ACG again, or you decide to switch to triple L, and that's not an issue then, you still need LACG receptor sensitivity by the time you add in Novodex clomid, of course. So if you stop ACG four weeks before starting PCT, preferably eight weeks, just to you know give yourself some time to replenish LHCG receptor content and G protein content of the receptors within the testicles and the adrenal glands, fingers crossed you should be okay. Or that that's at least what I've noticed with clients that were using ACG on cycle. You tell them to stop for a week in preparation of the PCT, and then you use it again during the PCT, and everything returns back to normal, right? including testicular volume. So personally, for this reason and potential for downregulation of the LACG receptor, I prefer not to use ACG on cycle. And if I were to experience testicular shrinkage, I would look into HMG instead of ACG because they're considerably more bioidentical in normal HPTA function. Now we're going to go into a little bit of a bro science territory here. Personally, I don't really experience testicular atrophy. And it's probably, this is speculation, is because superphysiological dosage of testosterone might be able to enter the testicles. Now, it's common belief that aromatized inhibitors, SARMs, or exogenous uh, androgens 
they're not able to enter the testicles. Instead, you would need to increase intratesticular testosterone levels through LH or ACG, through the LACG receptor. But at super physiological dosage of testosterone, even over 250 milligrams per week, for example, that's why hormone rep- generous hormone replacement dose, it's speculated that testosterone can still enter the testicles, increase intratesticular testosterone levels sufficiently to produce semen at sufficient amounts. And of course, you're getting testicular volume from semen production as well as testosterone production. So even though I don't produce intertesticular testosterone levels by myself, the super physiological dosages of testosterone are sufficient to enter the testicles and produce semen. And I can verify that because I've done many a fertility test on cycle and whether that was on 250 tests, 500 tests, and I checked also on a thousand milligrams of tests per week. To be fair, I only check my fertility levels on bioidentical hormones, so that's super physiological doses of testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, GH, insulin, but I never checked it on trembolone, mastrone, primobolin, or anivar. I just figured I wouldn't bother. I can't really say if my testicles shrunk during that time. When I was using Primo this time, 200 milligrams of Primo per week, I didn't notice any testicular shrinkage. So based on testicular volume, I'm going to assume my fertility was okay. Semen volume at least was... uh, legendary but it could be because i'm taking 800 milligrams of selenium per day and that uh, contributes a lot so that aside fertility in my sense and some of my clients that use bioidentical hormones and stick with super physiological doses of testosterone only my fertility and their fertility is good to acceptable so that's good morphology and good motility a sufficient semen count and a sufficient semen volume to get somebody pregnant and that's the case in my scenario and some of my clients that are willing to do a fertility check uh, when they're on cycle of bioidentical hormones. So in that sense, and it's a little bit of a bro science, but it doesn't mean that fertility needs to go down when you're taking steroids. And you might even be able to maintain sufficient testicular volume as long as you stay relatively healthy and you take all the supplements and the micronutrients or you get them from your diet to produce sufficient amount of semen. And there's a couple supplements and micronutrients that contribute. I already posted those on the website on the short-term ACG blast to restore fertility on cycle. And those micronutrients are utilized in semen production. So if you're on a bioidentical hormone cycle at super physiological dosages, you might be able to increase your intertesticular testosterone levels resulting in semen production. It's not the case for everybody, but it's not unheard of. So as long as you exclude the synthetic androgens and the SARMs, testicular volume and fertility might be able to maintain. And I'm proof of that, including a couple of my clients, but it's certainly not the case for everybody. And I think health and lifestyle, and if you had normal HPTA function before you started taking steroids, Because if you were androgen deficient, your HPTA didn't function correctly anyway. And whether that's the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland or the pituitary gland to the testes or something going wrong in the testicle regarding testosterone production or semen production. If your HPTA wasn't sufficient to get, you know, adequate serum concentrations of testosterone or fertility levels, then I don't think... It will be good on cycle and you probably need ACG or HMG to maintain or promote testosterone production intertesticularly and semen production as well. If you don't experience any testicular shrinkage and can prove that your fertility remains intact on cycle, you don't need ACG. But if that is the case, ACG might be beneficial. If you do experience testicular shrinkage on cycle and you want to use ACG or HMG to prevent that, I would keep the dosages extremely moderate and just use a sufficient amount to restore testicular volume to satisfaction. And that could be between 100 to 150 units of ACG or HMG three times per week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 100 to 150 units of ACG or HMG. Keep in mind that ACMG is 50% luteinizing hormone and 50% follicle stimulating hormone. Some of the more recent human menopausal gonadotropin products contain more follicle stimulating hormone compared to luteinizing hormone. So if you want to use HMG on cycle to increase testicular volume, intertesticular testosterone levels and fertility levels a little bit more compared to ACG, it's probably best to get a combination of LH to FSH in the one-to-one ratio compared to some of the newer HMG products, which would still require you to supplement ACG on top 
to maintain that one-to-one -one ratio. Because when you look at the blood work results, the serum concentrations of LH and FSH, the reference range, are almost identical. So going by the reference range and the most popular HMG products that are on the market, a one-to-one -one ratio seems best. Keep in mind that aromatized inhibitors aren't able to enter the testicles. So if you do decide to use ACG or ASMG on cycle, testosterone production will increase and so will estrogen production. And you can't block the estrogen production within the testicles with aromatized inhibitors. So you might need to increase aromatized inhibitors to block the conversion of testosterone to estrogen within adipose tissue. So by all means, if you add in the ACG or ASMG, make sure you check your estrogen levels because they might increase. I prefer to use ACG only during PCT to prevent the potential downregulation of the LACG receptor if you're using ACG for a prolonged period of time during your cycle. Because during PCT you use ACG for maybe two weeks, three weeks at maximum, but if triptyrellin was available, I would prefer to use that because it's an earlier step in normal HPTA function which signals the pituitary gland to produce LH and FSH in a similar fashion to Novodex and Clomid. So you're not even using ACG because it's not as bioidentical as LH is. And that pretty much wraps it up. So if you found this video to be helpful, please leave me a like. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a good time to do so. If you're one of the lucky few who've got balls of steel, even though you're using testosterone at super physiological dosages, you can put your fist right there you're my Baratna, and I feel your pain on the adductor machine because when the adductors are big and your junk is big, there's not so much room for anything else. See you guys in the next video.